video will demonstrate how to cache tiles using uh, Quantum GIS for use in GeoSync Go Plus, either in a, in a connected environment or in a disconnected environment. The cache tiles can can be uh, can be stored locally, or they can be uploaded into the cloud. First, we have a small water system. We see the water line layers uh, on the screen. We're going to turn those off. Um, actually, we can look and see how this overlays. The goal here is to is to cache the aerials, the, the background aerials that are in place, so we can have those available uh, in our GeoSync Go Plus project. I'm going to turn off the water lines because I don't want those to show up. I'm going to I'm going to display those in GeoSync Go Plus using live data. The way we do this, we're going to use our plugin QTiles plugin. You can download this from the um, from the plugin repository for QGIS. The options that we're going to use for the output is directory option. And uh, the default directory where we want to go to for our, our tiles that the GeoSync Go Plus uses is documents GeoSync Go cache. That directory, you probably have to browse to that. You may have to create that directory, but that is the directory that you need to use. Tile set name, we can give that a name. We'll call this city water. In terms of extent, which to tell it what area that we want to uh, cache, typically we're going to use either the canvas extent, which will be the map canvas that's on the screen, or we'll use a layer extent. I would caution you to not use full extent unless you're very, very clear on what the extent, the actual full extent of all the layers that are in your project are. We'll use layer extent. We're going to pick our waterline layers because that's the area that we want to cache. Next thing we need to look at is our zoom level. Uh, zoom levels match up to the zooms that are show up in GeoSync Go Plus. First thing we'd want to do is do a smaller area. Uh, the larger the number, the more tiles that are going to get cached because this goes deeper and deeper into your into your map. So what we'll do is we're going to do level 10 through level 16 because I know that's going to be a fairly small and manageable set of tiles. What I'll do is I'll cache those, I'll go in and look at those to make sure everything is the way that I want it, and then I can come back and fill that out and go deeper into the, into the map. In terms of parameters, we'll always want the tile width to be 256 locked into a one-to-one -one ratio. The format is going to be PNG, and you can play with the background transparency based on your map. Uh, of terms of the checkbox, uh, we want to use render tiles outside of the layers extent because that'll fill in our map nicely. I'm just going to go ahead and run this and this will cache our tiles. And it's telling me there's 512 tiles and it's now creating those into the city water directory. As soon as that finishes, then we're going to go to GeoSync Go Plus and we're going to take a look at the results. So at this point, I'm going to close my Q tiles and now I'm in GeoSync Go Plus. I've signed into my account. I'm going to go ahead and open my map. And from here, we can look at our uh, and the option tile sets. We'll see because I have a cache tile set, uh, GeoSync Go Plus is reading that from my uh, documents GeoSync Go cache directory. There's a folder in there called City Water. Turn that on and off. I can turn that back on and we can look at that. So we'll see what happens here. We cache down to level 16. If I go beyond that, the tiles go away. So I may want to come back and fill that in based on my needs. But I now have a cache tile that I can use both uh, uh, connected and disconnected. We'll have additional videos to talk about how we set up a full map for disconnected use and then also a video on how we can take these tiles and publish those to the cloud for use in a connected environment.